Hi everyone, I'm David Tash from Digitronics and I will be pre presenting the course of designing high-speed digital circuits for EMC compliance. A few words about Digitronics. Digitronics was founded in 2007 by yours truly and uh, provides turnkey solutions for the local and foreign high-tech companies with the expertise of digital high-speed board design, analog design, RF design, power supply, RTL code design, signal integrity and power integrity sim simulations. A few words about myself. I hold BSc in electrical engineering, um, MBA in business management, both from the Tel Aviv University, and come with about two decades of experience in the field of hardware R&D. Today's agenda is speaking about high-speed signal. What is the definition of the high-speed signal? And if I would present a question to most engineers, what would you define a high-speed signal? I guess most of you would say a high-speed signal would be about a, a few couple of hundred meg and some might even say about one gig and above. But is this really true? In order to answer this question, I would like to present an example. Suppose you, we have the following topology. An output buffer is connected to a receiver. The output buffer is oscillating in a frequency of 10 megahertz. And you would see that in this data sheet of this uh, output buffer, the typical uh, time is about 0.6 nanoseconds. And the output impedance is about 20 ohms. So in order to prevent reflections, we would, use, we would use a series resistor and we would drive the signal in a transmission line of about 50 ohms. And the result would be a square wave, an almost ideal square wave, oscillating in a frequency of 10 megahertz. But if we would look at this signal at the frequency domain, we would see a different uh, picture. Here we see that the bandwidth of a signal exceeds 1 gigahertz. And the question is why? In order to answer this question, we would like to look at the rise time presented as 0.8 nanoseconds of uh, the output buffer. If we would go back to the sum mathematics and the Fourier series, we would see that the equation for creating a square wave is given by the infinite series as you see below. And as you can see that the more we have more uh, components in this harmonics, the signal would, would, uh, would look more like a square wave. So, Empirical tests show that when rise time is plotted versus a known bandwidth, a specific relation occurs, and you can see this below. The bandwidth of the output signal with the rise time of 0.6 nanoseconds, as you can see, um, according to this equation, equals about 580 megahertz. But you should remind that this is the optimistic scenario. The question is why? So we said that the typical rise time is about 0.6, but we didn't speak about the worst case that the rise time and fall time would be much faster, meaning the bandwidth is expanding. So in order to sum up, the shorter the rise time, the wider the bandwidth. To sum up the whole session, when relating to a digital square wave signal, you should relate to its bandwidth and not to its signal frequency. The frequency will be used as the first and basic harmonic component that will be used also um, for uh, presenting the most energetic component. The signal bandwidth will impose the use of unique techniques in order to cope with EMC problems since the more high component frequency um, in the PCB and in the medium, we would have more serious EMC problems. 
some of which will relate to crosstalk, skin effect, jitter, decoupling capacitors, and so on. The high-speed board design uh, to compliant EM EMC course covers thoroughly the topics mentioned before and many more. In order to uh, receive more details, please contact the local John Bryce offices. <laughs>